Georgia was able to get the best of Texas. It was a really good football game. Two really good defenses. A couple of mistake-prone offenses throughout the night. We're going to dive right in and take a look at the keys to the game. And right here, Georgia's defense. They had 10 tackles for loss, 7 sacks. That is an unbelievable stat line there for the defense. And then also had 4 turnovers. I would say Georgia wins this thing in a route. But this one was a little bit closer than even the final score shows. And really, it's because Carson Beck turned the ball over. But right here, we're going to look at some negative plays right here that the defense forces. And this is an early sack right here. So on third and seven, obviously, you're going to have to hold the ball just a little bit longer. But just the coverage here on the back end is really good. Just rushing four. Looks like they're playing man-to-man, -man, maybe a two-man because it's too high a look here. But right here, just the individual effort by Jalen Walker, number 11 right here. He had three sacks in the game. Unbelievable. But he's just fighting against one of the best tackles in the country. Finds a way. He just... Ends up even getting torched right here, just playing with effort. Still swimming, trying to find a way to get him on the ground. Just grabs his leg, gets him on the ground. So, huge play right here. Already in the yellow zone, backed up. But obviously, coverage here by the secondary. And then great effort here by Jalen Walker, who ends up having three sacks on the night. This is the very first one. Just a four-man rush. Able to get him on the ground. Forcing a punt there by Texas early in the second quarter. No look here of just a Jalen Walker sack. I mean, that might be the theme of the beginning of this video. But right there, you just got a chip there from the tight end. He's going to work this tackle. And really, it's Ewers that just works up into this sack. They are getting this condensed. Where really this is made is when this D-tackle just absolutely throws the running back right here. And of course, when you got a running back on a linebacker, they only have so long before they get that probably physically dominate. And that's what happens right here. Jaden Blue gets thrown into the quarterback's feet. Really uncomfortable there for Ewers. He's got to get vertical, trying not to lose as much on this. If it doesn't end up being a sack, so he gets vertical. And right there, of course, Jalen Walker's going to be there to clean it up. Only about a three or four-yard loss, but still, it's a negative play. Get him behind the sticks. and get this on a third down, and they don't even get the ball thrown. So this is one of those plays where the DBs don't have to make a play. No chance for interference or anything like that. They get him on the ground before this ball even gets thrown. So far, we've seen Jalen Walker with two sacks. Getting after the quarterback, and obviously his effort. And then also on the back end, good coverage. And nowhere to go with, with the ball for the quarterback, probably in the first or second read. Very similar look here as well. Just a four-man rush on a third and five. So again... Third and five, these guys aren't even getting the ball in the air because the coverage is so tight right here. Looks like a pretty tight, looks like man-to-man -man right here just based off of what they're looking at and just being ag aggressive to cut off whatever is going on. This is Arch Manning. Looks like he starts his eyes over here, doesn't like the rub. Really where to go against man-to-man, -man, you got this under right here on third and five. That could have been a completion because there is a little bit of space right here on that rub, that under, whatever you call it. But right here, Manning never gets to it. He steps up, and again, very similar to the last sack. Good coverage. Those guys trying to get vertical on a third down and able to converge right there. Only one-yard loss. But again, getting these guys on the ground. Ball doesn't even get thrown on a third down, and there's a flag here for holding as well. So it stops momentum for anything that Texas has going on. Since we've already seen two of Jalen Walker sacks, let's go ahead and see the third one right here. And on this one, he's actually spying the quarterback. He just sits up here. He walks into the line to make sure that Arch can't get out and get vertical. And great rush right here. Probably a hold there as well. But it gets him out of the pocket. Now once Arch started rolling, now Jalen Walker, let's run this dog down. Let's run him down to go ahead and bird dog this guy. Just like Will Ferrell did in old school. Hey, bird dog him, Frankie. But right there, Jalen, Arch Manning, no chance right there. Just tracks him down. Great job getting him on the ground. Huge loss. The, the, re, the last couple were only about two, three-yard losses. This is a big one. Ten-yard loss right here. This on a first and ten as well. Right before the half. Make sure that you go to the half up by 20, which was huge. Again, Great play. Three hat, three sacks in the first half by Jalen Walker. And, of course, still have Arch Manning in there. And, again, four-man rush. Great job right here. Circling defense, playing fast, getting skinny. And he knocks the ball away. And who's going to come down with it? Got to be none other than Jalen Walker right here. So, linebacker, ball pops out, bounces right to him. Very nearly scores. I would have loved to have seen that dude make that guy miss and just walk into the end zone. But, Really good first half. This is a great way to end it as well. Ended up leading to a field goal. Great pass rush. Just spying right there. Able to get this football. Huge turnover right there right before the half. Able to get some points. Stretch the lead a little bit for Georgia. Last play right here. Looking at the D-line. Just getting after the quarterback. And on this one, looks like an inside zone or slide where if this guy squeezes, we're going to pull it. And try to get on the edge and throw the flat here. And you got to smash as well. But right here, Michael Williams. Another one of the freaks. And he, if he's unblocked... He's got such a great change of direction, he's going to run you down. That's what happens right here. Nobody blocks him, change of direction. He's able to get yours on the ground. That's one of his two sacks on the day. Uh, so right there, again, unbelievable D-line. They really dominated this game, kept Texas off balance, and really weren't able to get much of a rhythm. They did get a little bit of rhythm there in third quarter, but whenever they're getting negative plays, not able to get into a little tempo, not able to get some momentum, that's because of the D-line getting after you and getting you on the ground. 
like Georgia's D-line did against Texas this past week. We already saw a big fumble recovery and, of course, the 10 tackles for losses that Georgia's defense had, obviously putting them behind the sticks. And, of course, four turnovers as well. So we already saw one, but right here, we're going to look at a couple more turnovers right here on this one. DB opens up. It ends up being a zone coverage. Quarterback staring at him right there. doesn't see that it goes from a man look. Right here, pre-snap, you say, hey, this is possibly man. It, but this guy drops straight to it. you got a safety deep. Probably can't be man, but right here, he turns, gets his eyes on the quarterback. And right here, even though you're forced outside release here with that receiver, you should be trying to get his back turned. His back doesn't get turned, so he should be throwing the whole shot right there between the safety and the corner. But instead, throws it right here to the out route. Poor read here by Ewers, just guessing that it's going to be man-to-man -man, because that's what they've been seeing. Great changeup and then great job finishing the play as well here by Dalen Everett. Just jumps it, big interception right there in plus territory, already up 10-0. Great changeup, great call there by Kirby Smart and the defensive staff. Another great look here of just the pass rush, very similar to the last one. Again, Ewers again, Michael Williams getting to his upfield shoulder whenever he brings that thing back. But when we're swatting the football, that thing gets knocked out. And, of course, Georgia, the way they played all night, they're running to the football, they're making their breaks. And right here, as Damon Wilson coming down with the fumble. Great play. Again, playing hard. Getting the edge on these tackles and knocking that ball out. So this is a great pass rush. Again, condensing that pocket, being strong through it. I don't think Texas has seen anybody like this defense. And, of course, SEC is used to seeing this with Georgia, Alabama, the way that they've been the past about 10 years, really. They know, hey, whenever you go into a game like this, it's about to be the most physical game of the year. This defense is going to be stout. They're going to get after it with a quarterback and – you're going to have to try to find a way to get positive plays because there's going to be a lot of negative plays out there just by how strong that defense plays. So, so I think it's one of those things that Georgia is by far the best defense, best coach defense, and probably the best coach team in the conference and most consistent. Now, of course, they go to Alabama and lay an egg in the first half, but still, they're the class of the SEC, and that defense is by far the most talented, and they will get after the quarterback if you're a statue back there just standing in the pocket. Now we're going to take a look at some of Georgia's offense and some of the good things that they did do. Obviously, Texas is really good defense, and they did struggle with three turnovers, but they did some good things as well. Right here on this one, you got Twins look. This is on a third and ten, so a huge play right here. Texas just scored to make it a one-score game, so it's 23-15 right here. This is a really interesting call. So Texas is running to rolling down to a one-high look. He goes vertical, and it looks like right here he's running a curl from the outside. He's going out here to block on a swing. So right here, Texas, in order to not throw this swing out here, they've got to get two guys to it. So right here, as you see, again, there's the tight end swinging out. There's the back swinging out. They've got to get two guys to it. That's what happens right here. The safety is rolling. Outside backer is running there with it as well. And over the top is basically a cover three or maybe a cover one and just running a curl right back underneath it. So the flat was two guys going to the flats. They had to end up getting linebackers and safeties out there to it. And there's both of them right there. Of course, there's the back. There's the fullback. I know it's blurry as hell, but had to get out there wide. And then there's the curl working right back to the quarterback. Easy throwing catch. Tons of space. Got cleared out with this seam on this vertical by the slot receiver. And then, of course, they stretched the, def the defense and the safety. And now slot back had to run with the swing. So they drilled the curl in there right behind him. Really interesting concept. Good throwing catch right here as well. Big play there. Hopefully stopping some momentum from Texas right here with the big conversion. Now we're going to look at some of the run game. Obviously, inside zone was their number one run. Only averaged 3.9 per rush, but ETN was 4.6. And, I mean, the sledding was very difficult for both teams, especially running the football. But right here, really good box. A little bit of motion right here. These guys are sliding down, sliding over. So a little bit of communication. Their cleats aren't stuck in the ground. They're just running a split zone. So split zone, straight downhill, under center. And it should be really good. Again, base, they're going to double that up. They're doubling right there up. He's pulling a kick, this outside linebacker. He's on a block guy right here. Hold him with boot action. But right there, great job here by ETN. Understanding and trusting this double team. Press that double team. He's square, and then he comes off to that linebacker. Both of them are square. He had cut out right there. So, again, everybody's square. You got two-way cuts here with the running back. Now he can make that read and get vertical, play with some momentum. That's what happens right here on this one. He squirts through there. Really good job there by the O-line, squaring everybody up. And right there, once he's playing with momentum, no chance for this linebacker that it did end up getting a body on him right there from that double team from the backside. But again, a little bit of movement, squaring everybody up. Explosive run right there with just a little bit of motion and then running that split zone. No look right here of just running inside zone. This time they're actually leading to it. So straight downhill and they're faking the reverse. And see how much this takes as far as the defenders on this fake reverse. So again, don't just be stagnant. Has some sort of motion, has some, some sort of fake reverse, which is what happens right here on this one. And you can see he stays out there a little bit wide. He stays out there a little bit wide with that fake reverse, and that just opens it up just enough 
for the running back right there. You're basing the end, getting a double team up there, up, double team here, up, and they're basing the back side right there. So again, two double teams, basing there on front side end, and then sliding right into the wash. See how this guy is non-existent. But again, getting vertical after that wash. And then this great effort right here by ETN, make sure you get into the end zone. You never know what's going to happen. You got to snap the ball again. So right there, I thought it was a great play. Forcing his way into the end zone, diving in there, making something happen. But again, just not being stagnant is the key right here to this play. So faking that reverse, inside zone, and great double teams. And just movement right here. Doesn't have to be vertical, but right there, they are getting some horizontal movement and getting guys up to the backers. Again, this is a great design. A little bit of misdirection, and then a great individual effort here by ETN to get into the end zone. Now just a heavy set from Georgia, just running power. And they're going to get a double team here, working to the backside base. Pulling right here for the front side. He's going to try to kick this defensive end that's in this gap. So a lot of big bodies in here. And he squeezes pretty hard. Gets on his outside shoulder. Here's the puller. Everybody else is just down blocking, trying to keep from getting penetration. You even got a big fullback right here that's leading in there as well. as D-tackle. Big body. Just creating some movement. Now this linebacker is going to have to filter over the top. Realizing that this linebacker is going to be there. Realizing this defensive lineman is the guy he's going to have to take on. And not just an extremely physical job here by the D-lineman. He actually catches. Not great. But then again... You don't have to get much. You just got to have a, a body on a body and let your running back make a play. That's what happens right here. So if you stopped it right there, you'd say, man, this could go either way. But with you watching the momentum and the way that they're hitting this, I would say with that momentum, we got a really good chance for that running back to get into the end zone. So, again, got to play the momentum at running back, especially short yardage. It's not going to be clean. So that's a great job falling forward. Touchdown right there. This is on a fourth and goal. And the last touchdown that Georgia has. So this is a huge play. And amazing job finishing right there. Make sure you score a touchdown. And that really made this game look a lot more lopsided than it was, especially in that second half. Texas ended up coming to play there in that second half and ended up making a ball game of it. But right there, finish them off going up two scores. And you knew it would be a tall task for Texas to score two times there in the fourth quarter. And right here, go up two scores, about 12 minutes left in the game. Here's a big call. Georgia's trying to run the clock out. They're just going with a typical power pass. you got motion here. He's going to the flats. you got a corner. you got a flat route here as well. And this – Really is really well defended by Texas. That's the linebacker runs to it. Everybody's dropping. You got this guy crossing. Not a whole lot there. So right here, Carson Beck, he has to make something happen. And this is just great individual effort. This is on a third and four. And a first down is huge right here because you can almost get you can get down under a two-minute timeout right here, make them force Texas to use their timeouts. So that this was a great individual play. Knowing what to do, get vertical. Get the first down and get down. Let's move on. But that was an awesome play there by Carson Beck on that power pass. Again, a really aggressive call there on third and four by Mike Bobo. Trusting his quarterback and trusting his offense. Of course, this right here is the play of the night, and it makes it look like they're going outside zone, but they ended up going in reverse back to the backside, and then it ends up being a flea flicker back to the tight end. So right here, reverse to make it like outside mid zone. These guys are basically sliding. And really what you need to look at is this fullback. So right there, he's helping on the protection. Then he's getting up right here like he's blocking on this sweep. And then once they start running that direction, now he releases going vertical down the seam or down outside the numbers. So right there, again, stutter it once he starts running away. Now let's release outside the numbers. Toss it back to Beck. Now, hey, he's wide open. Good, easy two ball. Nobody left in that area. Easy throw and catch. Now we're rolling in space. Turns into an explosive play. And right here, again, Texas has just scored. And this ends up leading to that last touchdown where Georgia goes up by two scores. So... Really good call, really aggressive call. This on a first and 10. You know, this is something that they had in their pocket they really wanted to pull out in a big moment. And that's what they did right here. And they were able to execute really well, get their guy wide open, easy throw and catch, big play. Another great look of a well executed play, faking the screen here. He's stuttering like he's blocking for him, and he's going down the numbers. And you've got a post right here. So, again, play action across, hard fake with our shoulders and the ball right there, faking like you're throwing the screen. You see how aggressive these guys are to get down to it. And that post, all right, post is going to take that safety off right there. The stutter is getting in behind that corner. And, again, good pace to the football because you got to beat this safety. There's your safety. There's the corner that come down and played this screen. Outside linebacker as well. Got to put it on him with that whole shot. So I thought this was a great throw and catch. Great scheme as well. Puts it on his body. Big play on a first and ten, being aggressive, taking a shot there, faking the screen. Even with how big that win was, especially into the SEC standings, uh, you know that Georgia could play a lot better. Beck had three turnovers, and right here is one key, prime example of just being off by just a little bit. So a little bit of a rub, man-to-man. -man. Great decision. This is where we're going, but ball is way off, really inaccurate. You can't throw this thing high and off his body whenever he's breaking to the end. And right here, again, you can see 
just how open this is. This is a really good rug, really good route here. Give it to him, put it on his body, and make it easy for him to get make the catch and get one on one with that safety. But instead, we just airmail this thing, put it off his body, and he tips it up. Ends up being an interception. Really good play there by the DB from Texas. Those guys were keeping a minute with those interceptions early because really Texas defense was dominating. If they could have just scored on a couple of these possessions where they just turned it over, and of course this is already in the red zone. Should have had even a bigger lead than they had with 20 to nothing. So I think Texas got a little bit lucky with some of these plays that weren't. Able, but George wasn't able to execute. They got to do a lot better job because I know that they're probably going to play Texas, play whoever else again. They're going to be big games down the road. You got to be able to execute this. In key situations, especially red zone goal line, can't turn the ball over. Here's another look early, very first interception, and they're just running a stutter like we saw just a little bit earlier. You got two verticals you got to check down, not exactly like they had, but here on this one, he tries to go stutter to the screen. Again, coming across, play fake, and really just looking for verticals. They're getting tons of depth. There's really nothing there. I don't know why we're forcing this down the middle of the field. This is a bad spot to force the football, and right there, Safety is able to make a play on this. Great interception, great play, but you're forcing it into double coverage. Just get off of it. Throw the ball away. This is on second and four. There's really no reason to force this football. Either check it down here. This outside receiver is faking the screen, or let your guy right here, the running back, work one-on-one -on -one with that inside linebacker. Can't force this down the field and get turnover, especially early in the game on second and four. Last play that was really concerning right here was a fourth and one. They decided to go for it with just over two minutes, trying to put this game away. Texas used all their timeouts. If you get a first down right here, it's basically over. But instead, everybody is getting pushed back. Not very creative play call. A lot of people in the box and just not a lot of movement. And you'd love for this, hey, it's the end of game situation. You got to be keyed up. And instead, these guys are getting pushed back and getting flat backed. Like right here, that's, that dude gets absolutely dominated by 95, thrown on his face. So I hate to see that. You'd rather have those dudes be the aggressors. I mean, I, everybody's knocked back. There's nobody past this marker for the first down right there. So, Big stop there for Texas, give them at least a chance with over two minutes left. But right there, that was something that was really disappointing for Georgia. Couldn't step up with either a more creative play call or just being strong enough up front to move somebody. So even though it was a big win, there were some things that Georgia can improve on that were concerning, especially turnovers from Carson Beck. That dude got to do a lot better job than that in those big games. Against Alabama, I turned the ball over a ton as well, especially early. So you got to find a way to calm him down and make sure that he's playing within himself early in those big football games. With that being said, I really appreciate you guys watching. Make sure that you subscribe so you can see everything we have for this college football season. It's just now getting good, so make sure you're subscribed so you can see all the breakdowns that we have. But anyway, we'll see you guys again in the next video.